Yeah, there's a lot of Sega love in the show today. Um, we are going to carry on with that love. We've got the uh, the Sega Genesis Mini. Sega sent this out to us. Uh, we are not in review mode yet, obviously, but we are, are going to unbox it right now and see what's in the box. Uh, hopefully you guys get a nice clear shot right there. It's beautiful. It has uh, sort of the classic styling, like right out of uh, 1989, which is crazy. And uh, 30 years, I can't believe it. And then you get 40 games that are included on this thing, uh, plus two extras. You uh, you get, uh, I can't even... I can't even read that. Okay. <laughs> I don't have my reading glasses on right now. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's take a look inside the box here. It's Sega Genesis packaging, which I love. I had one of these back in 1989. I rushed to the video game store, and uh, I freaking adored this system. Uh, we're going to start with uh, opening up the, uh, the little mini right here. That is the size of it uh, right here. So let's start with this right now. It is... As the name implies, quite mini. There it is. It looks like the very first generation of the Sega Genesis. Uh, it has a, uh, a little volume slider here, which actually doesn't work. Uh, the on-off button, just like the old days. And you've got a little reset button right here, which I guess will take you right back to the menu. I'm going to take the plastic off, because we are going to play this a little bit. Um, HDMI connector in the back, and uh, the power connector, which I think is probably... Uh, the USB style, yeah, it's got the, the USB style brick right there, so you can plug that in. Oh, a little bit lower right here. You got the USB style brick right there. Okay. And we get two controllers in the box, which is cool. I like that these mini uh, consoles that are coming out right now are all about the uh, uh, getting multiple players in front of the television set and getting some uh, couch co-op going or some couch competition going. Um, so we're going to actually un uh, unravel these right now. So these are the Gen 1 three-button uh, Sega Genesis controllers, which, uh, man, this feels big. <laughs> I've been playing with the 8-bit uh, the dough controller on my analog uh, Mega SG, and it's a little, t a little tinier than this. But this feels good, feels sturdy. I'm looking forward to giving this a shot right now. Uh, so not one, but two of those, which is a pretty generous offering. The whole package, by the way, comes out uh, next month, and uh, it is uh, 80 bucks in the U.S., and it's 100 bucks in Canada. And for, with 42 games and two controllers and the hardware, I think that's a pretty damn good deal. Um, there are some excellent games included in this collection, by the way. Uh, so two controllers. Got some Sanix in there, yep, for sure. Put some of this down on the ground. Um, and then we get an HDMI cable, super important. Can't have enough of these. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> and uh, some classic style instruction booklets right there, basically telling you don't stick this in your mouth. And then uh, the power cable right here. There you go. So we are going to plug this in and uh, give the Sega Genesis Mini a test. We are back and we have plugged in the uh, Sega Genesis Mini and man, this is really cool hardware. I gotta say, Sega did an amazing job emulating it. Look, there's a little cartridge slot and everything in this thing. It's so cool. Um, this doesn't do anything. Cartridge just to go in. I know, it, that would be amazing. Maybe somebody's working on that. That would be so cool. It looks so great. Uh, so we're... Um, all right, we're going to try and figure out how to play a little bit of the uh, of the games Anything. themselves. Hey. Okay, so let, uh, let's actually go through all of the games. So we got Alex Kidd, Altered Beast. Okay, we can't go full screen on the game yet. Uh, but uh, we're having some uh, aspect ratio issues or something like that with the HDMI. Uh, but we've got uh, Wonder Boy, Toe Jam and Earl. Uh, we unboxed it and plugged it in live, so we probably shouldn't have done that, but it's working. <laughs> uh, Sonic 1, Sonic 2. <laughs> uh, we got uh, Castle of Illusion and Golden Axe and... Uh, oh, Golden Axe. Uh, what That's is this? Thunder player. Force 3? Golden Axe is a good two-player. Okay, unplugging us for a second. All right, we're trying to reboot the Sick HDMI. Dad. Sick Dad on Christmas. Yeah, there we go. Uh, Kid Chameleon, I used to love that game. Strider. Some classics in here. Echo the Dolphin. We had oh, yeah. Ed Annunziata on the show not too long ago talking about the roots of Echo, which is amazing. 
Uh, Road Rash 2, that's great. Uh, Sonic Spin. World of Illusion, I had a, I played this a little bit not too long ago and oh, I was blown Conja. away by it. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, so th apparently there's some issue with the, um, uh, the HDMI as we've got it sort of set up. We've got it through a splitter and everything. So we, we're not getting a lock signal that we can cut to. Uh, but we will record this and uh, record the games and uh, do a full review of this. But we can, uh, we'll just go off camera here. Did Audio is fine, video is not fine through our setup and system right here as we patched it in and went live. We knew we were risking a little bit by unboxing and plugging in during a live stream. I, well, we'll find out. I'm sure it's not. I'm, I mean, we're seeing it fine on the screen. I think it's just a... Uh, do, is there another... Okay, is there another, do you want to try a different HDMI cable directly into here? Okay. It's probably the switcher. Um, okay, well, why don't we play a two-player something here? What do we what got? Was the one you said oh, actually, you, you play and we'll, we'll do a little Let's Play in chat. So whatever you want to jump onto right now, you can, you can play. Thanks for joining me, Brett, by the way. No, my pleasure. All right. Anytime. Uh, me, Greg Surrett, uh, Seward says uh, the lineup doesn't change, but you get to play the uh, the region's version of the game. By the way, Vic, every time you change a game, it kicks the HDMI signal. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, that might be the okay. okay, okay. So it may not be perfectly set up for live streaming is what we're discovering right now. It might be... Uh, because this was the day that the embargo broke on this as well, so I don't think there's lots oh, of videos of people streaming this just yet. I asked Seg if it was okay if we could do a little live stream. The game's playing fine on the TV, uh, but in terms of like pumping, pumping, pumping it through a switcher and going live on it, um, it's a few little technical hiccups going on for us right now. But it is playing fine, sounds fine in the space. You guys are probably getting the audio just fine. Uh, let's see what we got here. Um, uh, aspect ratio of vintage games for 4.3 might look weird on 4K. Oh, okay. So I'm supposed to play over to that camera. Um, yeah. It's it's probably outputting a 720p signal and we've got a 1080p switcher. Text stuff. Yeah, well, it's definitely a, it's definitely an HD signal. It's def it's upresed for HD. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Which was also updating to outputting to HD. Yeah. No. So playing the classic Sonic. Okay, you guys are talking about Nazis because we had Wolfenstein in the uh, in the show. Good hybrid. Uh, we got famous Seamus in the chat and Sam I am one one one. If you change the language settings in the Genesis Mini, does the lineup of titles change for that region as well? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think it's it's locked to the same setups. Sonic didn't work. Oh, wait a sec. Greg answered that. He said the lineup doesn't change, but you get to play that region's version of the game. Okay, that's what you were talking about. So that's pretty cool. Same games, but you get to play the, uh, I guess, the PAL version or the, uh, would it be the PAL version? I don't know. Would they change to PAL? No, probably not. But you play the Japanese version of the game. Uh, let's see what we got here. Needs more cowbell from the VR grid. Um, trivia, Sonic's shoes were inspired by Michael Jackson. Oh, yeah, cool. Michael Jackson had a lot of love for uh, for Sega and ended up working with. Uh, I think they worked on Sonic Three. I think he did some music for Sonic Three before Whoa. he did did the Moonwalker game. Uh, uh, Audrey on Leon said no Sonic Three, Sonic Knuckles, Streets and Rage One and Three. Very disappointed with that. It is a bit weird when they when they leave some of the uh, mm -hmm. series off of the chip. Uh, but there are 42 games included on this, so it's pretty hard to be too pissed off here, you know. It's pretty hard to be really pissed off about this. It's, it's a lot of value for the money. Uh, Chris Wright laughing uh, his ass off about that Moonwaker game, or uh, uh, Moonwalker game. Uh, a Moonraker game would be a lot of fun, actually. Uh, let's see. Chris Seward is going through the lineup right now in the chat. 
Earthworm Jim is on this. Yeah. Yes, which is cool. Let's let's pop out of this. Uh, how do we how do we back out of the thing? I think you hold down the start button and you can it brings up the menu. I love that he's balancing. There it is. Okay, so we want to go to return to main menu. Bam. There you go. So choose something else. Let's well, let's go through the uh, the items that we have in here. Um, I love that Castlevania and uh, Contra are both included on here. It's great that Sega got a nice collection of third party as well as first party stuff. Uh, you gonna play Golden Axe? It's classic. Okay. All right. But let's you do can it. Play Golden Axe too. <laughs> the thing I like about these is that the, they feel like the old ones. Yes, like they, they do. That nice. Like, yeah. Good size. Good feel to it. Yeah. The uh, the joypad feels great actually. And the buttons feel really solid. Um, maybe hit reset on the console. Yes, you can do that as well. Uh, 007's did, uh, Legends did have a Moonraker segment to it. Thank you, Sam. I am 111. Uh, did everyone check out the retro throwback commercial that Sega put out the other out today? Uh, I haven't seen that yet, but I definitely want to see that. I sent them a video oh, of my nice. Genesis memories, which I'll share with you guys. Uh, I used to live before EP, uh, well before EP. Uh, in a house with um, uh, six or seven other people to kind of cut the rent down. We took over a whole house and we each paid about 300 bucks a month. It's actually a pretty smart way to do it. But I brought the Genesis to our shared house and we played through games like uh, NHL and Golden Axe and uh, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. And we used to sing the song together. We used to like, we came up with words, Sonic the Hedgehog. We used to sing it and pass the controller around and get into it. And, and it was such a cool, uh, it was such an amazing memory. And I really could see that video games could affect people emotionally. And that eventually led to EP, all taking in all of that stuff. I'm getting in your way. Right? It's all good. Yeah. It's all good. Can I jump in right away, or do I? I don't know. That's I, a good question. I was actually I, just thinking, that. oh my gosh, no, please you, no, come back here. No. No, no you can't. You can't. You got to pick I'm that right from the beginning. Surprise, they've added a Mickey Mouse game. They had excellent Mickey Mouse. I think there's two Mickey Mouse games on here. I think Castle of Illusion and World of Illusion are on here. I had the cartridge for Castle of Illusion. My uh, girlfriend, who's my wife now, and I, uh, at the time, we loved playing that game together. That, that's the thing, man. Like, I, I, I think a lot of modern consoles are all about getting together with friends online, but these classic consoles didn't have any of that. So they were in the living room, and we shared those experiences with our friends and our loved ones and our family. And, and uh, there's a lot of emotional um, connection tied in with that. And, and, and the nostalgic sort of sugarcoating uh, plays a part of that as well. Uh, but yeah, I have great memories. I, you know, classic, classic games. Uh, let's see, we got Dr. Robot, Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine is in there. Uh, it's only Streets of Rage 2, which is a bit weird. Toe Jam and Earl. Uh, the um, Wonder Boy game is in there. Vector Man, an un underappreciated uh, gem. Uh, We've got uh, Beyond Oasis, which is super cool, and Columns, which was a pretty solid uh, gravity-based puzzle game. Uh, uh, Eternal Champions, which was a superhero fighting game. This is kind of a masterclass in uh, in fantastic Sega Genesis, uh, you, you know, gems. There's some great stuff in here. I love that Echo the Dolphin is on here as well. Very cool stuff. That's why I love playing Street Fighter 4 at the rec room. Random people will come up and talk to you, Blair Farrell. Yeah, I think that there's something so incredibly valuable by sharing that game experience, having a television and, uh, and sharing that whole thing uh, with your friends in the same room. I think that's really, really cool. Question, asked this before, not sure you saw it, but any controller problems from Nintendo Boy 17? Have you noticed any lag or any hesitation? No, not really, no, yeah. it's pretty good. I mean, we, we just um, opened it. Pretty responsive, it. yeah. Yeah, I'll have a full review in uh, in September. Uh, but uh, I've been looking forward to this, and clearly Sega's been paying attention to what Nintendo's done. They worked with M2 to do all of the um, uh, all, all of the uh, porting to the machine and all of the development to make sure that the uh, uh, the ROMs were as solid as they possibly could be through the simulation. Uh, M2 has done some excellent work in the past too. Um, so yeah, I think I think this is going to be a very very solid game escape, man. I'm really looking forward to it. Vic, do you think the Sonic the Hedgehog movie will be good? From Jeff Meacham. 
Uh, no, I don't, but I, <laughs> I hope it is. <laughs> it would be great if it was. Uh, the Pokemon movie surprised a lot of people, and I think I that's... Pleasantly surprised. Yeah, I think they've, they've set the, uh, the bar there, right? They've got to be there. Uh, Danny Johnson says, Hey, Vic, what games are not here that you would have liked to have had? Uh, you know, I'm just getting familiar with the list right now. Um, I, I, oh, Jungle, Jungle Strike. Yeah, the Strike uh, yeah, games the strike were excellent games, on the yeah. Genesis. I love the... I love the superhero games, and Sega, oh, yeah. Sega had them, right? Like, they had the X-Men games, and they had Spider-Man. Yes, yes. I talked to Ed and Unziata. X-Men games. Yeah, those were amazing, but of course that's a whole bout of licensing that they would have had to gone through, which we kept talking about. It's one of the only two uh, They have the games Disney have games, so, some, so they worked with Disney on uh, Castle of Illusion, and Earthworm Jim would have been a licensed deal. Um, but it's a bit disappointing that there aren't the, the uh, side-scrolling superhero games. Sega did Adventures of Batman and Robin, which was a, uh, a decent shooter. It was a weird direction for Batman, but it was a pretty, pretty fun game. Uh, but Capcom made, uh, I think the Punisher game was pretty rad. The Captain, Captain America and the Avengers yes. game that they made yep. was excellent on this. The little Shield and Hawkeye. And yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and uh, 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 the X-Men so stuff sorry. and Spider-Man. So was some classic stuff. Let's, okay, let's see another game. So those are the first things that pop into mind. I love that Road Rash 2 is on this uh, on this oh, uh, machine. We're firing up you know, right now, honestly, right now. NHL 94 or 93 should have been on here, don't you guys think? Should yes. have been an NHL yeah. game, right? Road Rash. Let's do that. Road Rash. But I can't complain, man. Like 42 games, two controllers, the, the hardware, and it's 100 bucks in Canada, 80 bucks in the states. That's that's crazy. You're paying two dollars a game. Less than that, because you're getting all the hardware as well. Uh, I knew you, Danny. I knew you'd be disappointed with no Batman game. Uh, I think that was the only oh, game. They, they made Batman Returns for the Genesis, but I don't think I ever actually played Batman Returns on the Genesis. I played it on the Super Nintendo. Uh, the Mutant League games. Sunset Riders. Is, uh, uh, Sam I Am 111 says the Mutant League game should have been on there. Blair Farrell says Sunset Riders. Uh, the Mutant League hockey game. Sam I Am 111. Uh, I, ha I have a, a hundred of the best PS1 games on my PS Classic. Oh, you did you did a little hacking, did you? Genesis Collection for PS4 includes online multiplayer and VR support. You play in a 90s bedroom and play on a CRT. They did a good job with the uh, the Sega Genesis Collection. I have that too on the Switch, uh, and I play it all the time. Though, they're, though it's very solid that you can turn it away. But there's something to be said about the, Get on the road. retro Get on the road. nostalgic experience, yes. right? I love this freaking well, game. Well, I, I think it's like half of the game, half of the thing about a console is that the, the input device you're putting into it changes per console to console. So yeah. like when you touch, putting your hands on a Sega Genesis versus uh, N64 controller, it's just a different experience. To totally is, yeah, 100%. I mean, it's very cool that they put the, put these in. I'm gonna, um, I have the M30, the Genesis-like controller that 8-Bit Doe made, and I believe they have a uh, USB receiver so I'll get one of those and I'll try that controller with this because it's a six button controller. I don't think any of the games that they chose, by the way, are six button games. But of course what they did is they they uh, moved to six button game development quite quite a bit once those controllers came out there. Um, let's see if they have... Yeah. The Streets of Rage 2 is on there, but I don't know if Street Fighter is on there. I'm not sure. Com Comic Zone? Oh my god, that's a classic. I have Comic Zone on almost everything. I have it on my phone. I, I have it on the Xbox. I've got it on the PlayStation. I love that game. That's a game that Sega should absolutely revisit or work with some uh, developers to bring back again. That would be great. Fantasy Star 4, Dynamite Heady. Uh, there are hours of games. Ooh. Hours and hours He's of fun right with these to games right here. It still looks pretty cool, right? Yeah. Like, this is all 2D design, but they did a pretty damn solid job of uh, streaming the road towards you. And I, I have Road Rash 3 for, for my Genesis, and I like it, but I feel like they got a little too ambitious. I think this was the sweet spot. That's probably why they chose it. Does this one have weapons still? Like, uh, yeah, you can pick up bats and yeah, bash people off the... Uh, throwing a weapon at me. Yeah, know. it's super fun. What's the release date on this, Blake? It's September. Is it? Is it the 14th? Okay. Well, it comes out next month, but today I guess they wanted to uh, get us all talking about Sega Genesis because it's the uh, the 30th anniversary of the Sega Genesis launching. Um, Killer so, Instinct would be nice. 
No, that's a, that's a Super Nintendo. Is it? That was a Rare developed game, yeah. And Rare was working almost exclusively with the... They were oh, a second-party yeah, right, developer. I was, uh, um, I was thinking... Um, Shaq Fu. It was two fighting games that I played. They're just weird ones. Shaq Fu. Oh, yeah. my God. I haven't heard that in ages. Uh, it was terrible, but so good. Yeah. <laughs> they made that Shaq Fu game. They, they made another version of Shaq Fu no not way. too long ago. Yeah, they brought it back a 3D version. Oh, they didn't need to do that. Light Crusader is on here. Oh, they have the Mega Man game on there, too. Yeah, this is a, this is a great collection. So I'll dive in. I will uh, check, uh, I'll check out all of the games and play them and record a bunch of footage. And we'll have a full review when I can talk about this thing in full. But I'm impressed so far. Um, uh, I like the menu setup. I like the fact that you can save. Um, yeah, it's really, really dope. Thank you, Sega, for sending us one of those. And uh, stay tuned for the review on that and uh, uh, some more information about all of that Sega Genesis stuff. Um, what's up? Oh, play to this camera now. Uh, so uh, that's going to do it for our episode today. Thank you, Brett. Thank, Thank you for coming Thanks down to 390 West Hastings to be a part of the show. Thank you again to Josh Holmes for uh, driving out to uh, see us here in studio. Great visiting with you. And thanks for all of you watching. Um, we're going to take a little bit of a break for the, the next couple of weeks. I've actually got a wedding to go uh, fly to, and I'm going to be spending some time with the, the family. We'll still be posting some videos, but EP Live uh, isn't coming back until the first week of September. I'll have some news on uh, who our guests are going to be. They're starting to come together already, and we're going to have some great shows. So definitely come down to the studio to see the show live if you can. But we'll be back with lots of streaming content for you in September, uh, EP live-wise. But uh, lots of reviews are going to oh, be God. coming up on the channel very soon. Thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure that you play forever.